Keeping the hot side hot and the cold side cold. This is the perfect pour. Why do you have to keep the hot side hot right now? It's too hot for the hot side. We don't need That's the hot side. That's why you side. gotta keep it hot, so you could keep the cold side cold. Uh, so you know the difference between cold and hot, or what? That's right. Yeah. If you keep the hot side hot, then you could stay on the cold side. Oh. And keep your beer cold. Okay. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. The hot side takes all the energy, and yeah. so you can be cold and cold. I get it, McDonald's. Welcome to the Perfect Four. It's a show about things uh, fun to beer geeks. I am Mikey. I'm the Nick. And Rad Stacy has left the show for tonight for for, or for this episode. Not <laughs> not 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 uh, the whole show. We hope. She hasn't turned in her notice yet. Yeah. Yeah. You got two week notice standard practice in podcasting. That's you can't right. Just like leave. Like, what, how are you going to get a, a referral from us? You're not going to get a <laughs> referral from us for the new podcast that we want to join a new podcast. Notice how Matt hasn't been able to join any other podcast because he, yep. we, he didn't, we didn't give him a re- referral. Dang it. So his application for yeah, everyone's like, no, nah, bro, still pending. Yeah, no, you gotta get to pay your paperwork done properly. This is not That's right. So he, file. you can't get in on those podcasts. It's worse than the DMV. You didn't bring your birth certificate. Yeah, I love gold. Um, uh, I just opened a beer, but I want to talk about the beer I was tailgating with. It was Urban Roots uh, anniversary. The uh, what is it? Traveler's Welcome, their anniversary beer, the fifth anniversary beer. It was uh, donated to the show by Wazoo Corvette. It is double or is a dry hopped West Coast Pale Ale, Whoa. and it was a nice beer. All is a cool label. Got this all kinds of artwork going on with it. And thank you, Wazoo, for that. And now I just opened up one from Bay Cyclone, Brian Anderson. It's Easy Peel, Triple Dry Hop. It's uh, from Adventure Adventurous Brewing. It's a double IPA. And it's Adventurous is an Iowa brewery. Bettendorf, Iowa. So, uh, thank you, BA Cyclone, Wazoo, and BA Cyclone. What are you drinking over there? I uh, I tailgated with a Rove from Pure Project, which is their light lager. I'm I'm listening to you guys, and I'm going to try some lagers <laughs> till I find. I one. I'm not I'm I I'm not. I'm not talking about it. All I am I'm trying to. I'm not getting it. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm not getting loggers. Not getting them? You're I, not I, getting them? I mean, I'm just, I don't think I'm built for lager yeast. Is what nah. it is. It's not in your blood. Huh? It's not that it's bad. It's just, I'm, I am I don't look forward to loggers. I like the drinkability of loggers, and like that's it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like the idea of a logger. <laughs> yeah, I like uh, the idea of a logger, but then in execution, I'm like, I'm like, man, I'm really fucking bored here. I'm so <laughs> bored. I'm so <laughs> bored. What's going on, Mike? I'm drinking loggers. Can you put some fun in my logger? <laughs> Make it fun. And then you're like, oh, here's a, here's a, here's an IPL. Here's a hoppy logger. You're like, ah. Uh, and I'm like, well, I guess it's better, I guess. <laughs> I'm less bored. <laughs> yeah, I'm not as bored. But could you make it with ale yeast? <laughs> could you hop it <laughs> yeah, more yeah. and make it with ale yeast? Yeah, we could do that. 
Oh, now it's starting to taste like a beer. Sweet, smooth. Yeah. I have a feeling I'm I'm in your boat. Um, I just I don't think lagers will be my thing, but I'm gonna try. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I'm, do this I every won't. once in a while. I'll, you know, I'm like okay. All the industry people say lager, lager, lager. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I guess I'm just stupid and I need to keep drinking it. But it never takes. It never. I'm never like, all right, now I'm lagering. Now I'm all about it. All all about the lagers? Uh, You're lucky in a lager all summer. It just doesn't happen. But I'll try. I'll keep trying. Is there a lager fest? (laughs) <laughs> in, in in the in the it's, bre- all, it's all brewers in brewers wet dreams there is no uh, uh, lager fest uh, honey wake up what's going Minnesota. on oh it's in you've, Minnesota you've got a giant boner <laughs> honey what's what were you dreaming about were you dreaming about women no I was dreaming about loggers babe. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I can believe that. An entire festival dedicated. <laughs> I saw it. I was, I was there. It was real. It was a whole festival of all loggers. I was so bored. It was great. We made this well, one. Your dreams have come true. The, the MN Craft Logger Fest. Oh, all right. The Minnesota. <laughs> this event right. has ended. Oh. That is... So oh, it says, no! the Saturday before Father's Day. Of course, it's before Father's Day. <laughs> Brush off your New Balance yep. shoes. Oh, yeah. My jeans and my belt, my jeans and belt, and my shirt tucked into my jeans, and my fanny yeah. pack. <laughs> There's also an impromptu Corvette festival at the, in the parking lot. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, you didn't know it was a Corvette festival. And like, check this out. This is the anniversary edition. Whoa. Yeah. Z06, man. Wow. I still have the window sticker just in case. Hey, man. Sweet new bounce. Thanks. So, Logger Fest does exist. Yeah. Start planning for 2024. Yeah. Book your hotel room now. Sure. Yeah. Sure. (laughs) Stop. The soup rates are filling up quickly. Uh, yeah. Well, I'll just sleep in my car. It's fine. Logger fest. Yeah. Yeah. Mikey, as a dad, what is the most dad thing to do? Like, where do dads sleep? Do they, <laughs> would you splurge on a hotel room? Uh, or are you like, no, you, you would uh, and just sleep next well, to the car? Well, I mean, the, the alcohol complicates things, but ordinarily you would just drive back. Like, oh, no, I can drive oh, back. At, oh, one day. Like, yeah, I can just drive it. It's like 11 o'clock at night, and uh, it's like a four-hour drive. Like, oh, no, I'll just drive back. I I can just drive back. It's fine. Oh, no, I'm awake. I'm awake. Oh, I'm fine. Yeah, stop at the Denny's and get yeah. a cup of coffee. The most amazing coffee you ever had in your life. Are you sure you're okay to drive? Oh, I'm, oh, yeah, I can drive home. Do this all day. I'm not paying two hundred dollars to just to sleep. What's the minimum amount of truck stops you <laughs> need to stop at on a road trip? Well, yeah, it's got to be a good one. Yeah. Where the real you, truckers are you a got. flying J or you a... <laughs> pilot? Flying J pilot. Um, yeah, all the good ones. The the Lager Festival needs to be in the parking lot of a Flying J. Please, mm-hmm. please make that happen. Uh, Flying J. Uh, Madeira just got one, not just, but a fairly new. What's that other chain? Um, truck Loves. Stop? The what? Loves. Not is it Loves? Yeah, maybe it is Loves. Yeah. On seventeen. Yeah, it's a Loves. They got an Arby's in that one. That's oh, that's some dad stop right there. They they have the meats. Yep. Loves truck stop with the Narvies. Oh boy, that's good stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's double deluxe. That's deluxe stuff. Hobnob with all the the truckers. <laughs> oh yeah, what do you uh, well, yeah, Riggy running there? 
Oh, yeah, I got a Chevy, uh, Chevy Malibu. I'm running a Chevy Malibu out right now. Yeah, you should see the uh, MPGs this baby gets. Oh, yeah. Go over there and gas up with all the, the big rigs. Right. <laughs> Just squeeze in between. Yeah, I guess yeah. it's Malibu. They won't right. mind. No, they're they're like, oh, it's cool. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, got me googling truck stops now. All right, well, we're all set. We're ready. We're ready to start the show. Oh, you know what we're gonna be talking about. I feel, I feel the top. You feel it coming? I can. Uh, this is a Karnak. Like, yeah, Nick's too young. Remember the old uh, Johnny Carson bit, where uh, Ed would hand him an, uh, hand him an, a sealed envelope, and he would. He would uh, guess the. Uh, he would say a statement that were related to what would be in the envelope. Be like, <laughs> anchor um, brewing is something. Dropping similar. anchor has a new meeting. <laughs> uh yeah, what happened? Uh, so it's. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Sapporo is the new. Owners, newish owners of Anchor, correct? <laughs> yeah, they're they're the latest owner. Yeah, they're the the current owners of Anchor. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, technically. And so the the first shockwave they sent was they're pulling all forty eight states of distribution. Yeah, that, that was our first thing two weeks ago. And then this week, well, then they just said said they're going to stop enough. the Christmas. We're closing sale. the whole thing down. Yeah. Well, then they they said they're gonna, not going to make the Christmas sale. Well, that was part of the forty eight. Uh, uh, yeah. Right. That was at the back. same time. And then yeah, now they're yeah. like, you know what? We're just going to not make beer. <laughs> not only are we not going to make Christmas sale, we're not going to make any ales. We're not going to make any ales or lagers for that. Maybe they're going lager only. <laughs> yeah, maybe that was their mistake. So Anchor the, Brewing, the brewery was, was quote closed. losing millions of dollars a year. Jeez, man, like what? I wonder what prompted them to buy. Like when they bought Anchor, it couldn't have been. It couldn't have looked that great then. <laughs> it wasn't that long ago. Like they couldn't have been seen like. They could have known it's not a growth. I don't know. It's easy to see now after everything that's happened, but I feel like, you know, Anchor had its place as a historic craft brewery, and but it was not, it, it wasn't going to up and, it wasn't an up and coming brewery when no. it got bought or anything. It wasn't any, there wasn't any, reason to think that anchor was gonna like tear a new hole in the craft beer again or something (laughs) well were they thinking that was the one they cared about like are are is the buyout game about finding the brewery we finally care enough about to keep buying it after it's bought out i guess yeah maybe that was their thinking was like it's got this base of people that aren't gonna leave it and we'll at least have that, and then we'll do our thing to it, and make it better or something, and yeah, put it in cans. That's a never, good idea. <laughs> which never, like, never works. Well, I still have yet to somebody, a listener, can point it out, but and I'd be willing to talk about it, but I can't think of one craft brewery that got better because they were bought out. I don't, okay. I don't, uh, and I mean, or like, not even, I, I, I don't even better. We're doing to a like, great job. Like, we are successfully boycotting breweries that got yeah. bought out, but now this one kind of sucks. Yeah. We're like, well, I mean, we shouldn't have done that because it's, because that's going to happen. Like, 
you're operating on the such a thin margin of error anyway as a craft brewery and then when somebody buys you out when a big beer buys you out you're going to lose a percentage of the, you're automatically losing mm-hmm. like a core percentage of the audience like i understand that not everybody's like i am or we are about like once something's not independent anymore we start ignoring it but that is mm-hmm. a, a a sizable percentage of craft beer people that's what happens when a brewery gets bought out so you're you're buying a brewery that you're automatically losing a percent a yeah. significant percentage of the customer base like odd like for right from the beginning so like how are you going to get that let's say you lose let's say stone lost 40 percent of their customer base when they sold out like how are you going to get that 40 percent and that might be kind of high but how are you going to get that 40 percent back you can't like how the hell like and yeah. and they don't when them when a uh a craft brewery gets bought out they don't seem to get distributed much more if at all sometimes even less like the one advantage of being bought out is like oh i've got this uh now they can really start getting me in the restaurants i never was in before and get me in the grocery stores i wasn't in before and it doesn't seem yeah. that really even happen that doesn't even seem to happen like for the most yeah. part i'm sure there's uh outliers that you could point out i'm sure but like for the most part like no it's just i it's like the i think definitely in like Maybe not in the case of Sapporo, but in, in A B M Bev's case, they're just buying. They were anyway. It's not really happening anymore. But just buying craft breweries just to, just to squash them, just to like not have to deal <laughs> yeah. with them, instead of like as a something to make money with. And I, I just I don't know that. Any, why is anybody gonna buy any? Big beer gonna buy a craft brewery at this point. I still get the, um, the uh, another craft brewery buying like when Drake's brought in, mm. uh, what was it Twenty First Amendment that Drake's bought? Well, who was it that Drake's bought? That's a good question. I don't remember. <laughs> Our friends Drake's. at Drake's bought another, which like sort of made sense. Like they're gonna they're gonna care for it in the same manner. And you're not losing, right. and you're so not gonna promote them. You're not losing your customer base by doing that, and they're gonna they know how to uh, promote a craft brewery. Where as Big Beer doesn't know, like Sapporo didn't know what to do with Anchor. They're just like, well, you do what you you guys do. Oh, Bear Republic. Bear Republic, yeah. But like, um, <laughs> they're like, well. You Spore's like, all right, do what you do, Anchor. And and like, well, we lost a sizable chunk of our customer base by doing this, by selling out to you guys. So you guys need to make up that difference and that they don't ever seem to make that no. difference up. They're like, oh, you're losing money now. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, Bye we have you. to compensate for when we sell out, we lose a, a large percentage of customer base we have to compensate for that and then the big beer seems to like i don't know what to do i don't know how to compensate for that bro mm-hmm. like, i don't want to try you hard. guys were you guys were selling 800 barrels uh when we bought you now st- keep selling 800 barrels We're like well, yeah. well that's impossible because you just we just pissed off a <laughs> you large killed that for yeah you guys work really hard we don't want to do that <laughs> But you know, I've seen things people saying like, "Oh, it's I." We are not to blame for Anchor, um, uh, going bankrupt because it's not. I, I mean, that's that's what happens when I. I, I mean, I try mm-hmm. to think about what how much I was drinking Anchor before. They mm-hmm. began selling out because it did come in increments, but and it wasn't a lot, but it wasn't nothing. 
I was still drinking Anchor. And nice. when it happened, then I wasn't doing it anymore. And it's not, I mean, some people want to blame us for this kind of stuff. And it's not our fault. It's like, yeah, we're fickle and we keep trying new beer. And, um, and sometimes we don't uh, buy the, the staples enough. And I'll admit to that. And, but, um, it's, uh, you know. You have to if you you have to be very dynamic when you're a craft brewery and big beer is not dynamic. And they yeah. don't get how to do that. And when you when you lose a percentage your your most avid percentage of your customer base when you sell out and you that big brewery doesn't know how to be a craft brewery. It's just going to fail eventually like i'm 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 assuming we're gonna see this with stone at some point like do you think this is like this they've already been shrinking like they're definitely a a less of a presence here in town yeah i don't i don't see them i don't hear about them anymore the it's just that same i i think neck by this time next year we're gonna be talking about what what happened to stone in the same way well, so I did the thing tonight, or uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Wednesday night. You know, okay, uh, sla- bad, bad me, but I went to the store to look for an anchor. Okay, one more anchor, one yeah, more time. Yeah, I do want to go Just out to reminisce. I do want to get so now that now that it's over and <laughs> they're they're going away, I will now purchase some anchor the just to have around the sea. Yeah, well, I tried, and you think okay. Anchor used to be in six pack bottles at every supermarket in Fresno, right? Oh, I mean, yeah. that's not an exaggeration. Like no. Like if, if it, it was, was not hard to find anchor. If if it was a place that had craft beer at all, the anchor was there. It was like the fires it was like Firestone, Anchor, um, Stone, really. In Sierra Nevada. Yeah. Okay, so I go to a place that should normally have it. No bottles, no six packs at all. All they had was a mixed uh, mixed can 12 pack that had anchor steam IPA, yeah. some hazy they make now <laughs> and another, a fourth beer. I'm like, no, I'm not spending $21 yeah. to get four steam beers in a can. That's just not right to me. Yeah. It's so no wonder they're right. failing. They, when they stop packaging their iconic beer in bottles and six packs and distributing to just, you know, normal places like i should not have to go to bevmo just to find anchor steam like yeah that doesn't make any sense to me yeah especially when they're supposed to supposedly have more reach yeah i mean that that beer you know and then that i mean started that when we started this newcastle sierra nevada pale anchor steam yeah and i don't know rolling rock were probably like so freaking common (laughs) yeah in the cold boxes it was ridiculous those were the beers you went to and, and, and that you, you the, one of those in the in the in the chiller and it's easy to say now but like the label change wasn't a smart mm-hmm. move at this point i wasn't really uh that didn't offend me that much when it happened yeah. when they went to that old that bold yellow uh, yeah. label but now right. thinking less, back thinking back intricate. though like that anchor steam label was like so, so un- iconic and for now it's e- now in retrospect you're just like wow you guys that's that is like a historic label that you guys like completely flipped right like not sierra nevada hasn't even messed with theirs that no. much like it's been subtle in the last it's like 40 years. like just like Pliny the elders label like if you right. dr- drill down, you can see some little variants here and there over the years, but mm-hmm. for the most part, it's the same. Cleaned it up, yeah. And I, I think that's probably what you do with an acre steam, but um, <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> the label, the label was not the problem with it selling. It was yeah. I mean, that wasn't the problem. Availability, I guess. Eighteen ninety six to two thousand twenty three. Thanks, COVID. Uh, uh, 
Beer, Jeff Allworth from Beervana Blog, BeervanaBlog.com, had a couple of nice, cool. He did a good post, sort sort of a New York Times, uh, um, uh, when the New York Times does really good, uh, um, <laughs> God dig it. I've had two beers. Like when somebody <laughs> dies, what do you the eulogies? The New York Times does really good eulogies, and it was kind of a he wrote kind of a eulogy to for uh, mm. um and uh, a couple of good quotes he had was uh, that uh, anchor was at once the past and the future. Yeah, you know, yeah. At some point, like Anchor wow. was like, like was was that's a great line. Was craft beer, and then also was the future of craft beer, and um, and then uh, whether craft beer, whatever craft beer is, it's a different thing now that Anchor is gone. Mm. That hurts. Yeah, hurts, don't it? I'm surprised how. Like how many outlets uh this story was on like is on Forbes, is on yeah. uh uh USA Today, uh it it was just on every news outlet, basically. Which uh, kinda yeah, surprising because kept popping up. Yeah, even in uh even in uh the UK this is being talked about. Wow. But that's just it's just a legendary craft brewery that's just no it's just mm-hmm. it, it, you wonder what would happen if they didn't were never bought out in the first place and they just maybe just pull back that that pulling back thing they did a few weeks ago if they would have done that instead of getting bought out just Years like ago just say like, we're, we're just gonna make enough for california we're just gonna pull back to russian river levels of production mm. Mm-hmm. And see, and then yeah, they would would have had to have laid off people at at that point, but it would have been better than closing. Yeah, I mean, I, I, right now, and that's going to be for a long time. Now, if you're a craft brewery, you have to just sort of stay in your stratosphere and like don't. That whatever level that is where you're like, oh, I've got to expand, expand. You can't. That's just not a level to go to anymore. You've got to be happy yeah. with whatever money you you make around your region. And if that's not good enough, then it, then it's just that's what you have to accept because <laughs> um, there's no there's no yeah. reason to expand outside of your region because where you, how are you gonna make money doing that? Damn, it's too real, Mikey. It's too real. Nick's getting depressed now. I wish we had an industry person like Rad Stacy to talk about this with us. <laughs> it's bullshit, I tell you. Bullshit. Damn it, Stacy. I know she's listening, so I'm, that's why I'm, I'm talking like that. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah, there's a good. Uh, I mean, that whole thing with uh, it was gonna. Or Anchor was gonna close up in like the late '60s, and then Fritz Maytag came in and. And gave him like a financial boost, basically the Maytag of the washer dryer Maytag. <laughs> the Maytag. The Maytag. Wow! Yeah, sixty-five. He took over. Yeah. And made it successful again. And this was like, you know, Anchor was like the major influence of like basically craft beer because uh king grossman this is like king it was you know anchor was like the russian river of its of the 70s i guess or something you know and all the all the brewers were influenced by what that their facility and and what anchor did and and that sort of modern craft beer movement was 
largely influenced by Anchor. And the steam, the steam beers. Yeah, they should have never. Go ahead and experiment. They should never have tried to put steam beer in a can and mix it with. It, it you should still see steam beer in a bottle everywhere. Yeah, it just doesn't feel right. It just and, is the same way yeah. with uh, barrel aged stouts in a can. It's just like, uh, like I like can, I like I like canned beers as much uh-huh. as the next person does, but like certain beers just don't. But I don't even care if it's even it's somehow better than a can. It still does not <laughs> vibe well uh, with me. It doesn't feel right. Like I, yeah. I, I just can't and, do it at barrel aged stout and a can just doesn't seem right to me. And and not finding it on the shelf, that's not a problem of that didn't just happen. This has obviously been happening for a while. Yeah. Yeah, it's you like know, when's why... the last time you saw it on on draft even as an option at a restaurant? Like, I wonder, I wonder what support like they have. They're they're a they're a major business of of millions of sales of beer. They know how to mm-hmm. sell beer, like the like the very technical. Like, I'm sure Sapporo still is a successful beer. I assume. <laughs> like I, I, you know, when I'm at, uh, when I'm at having getting sushi or something, that is a situational beer for me. But so, yeah. I mean, they know how to sell beer, but then why did the why does why do they fuck up craft beer so bad? Like they just like they I I I think it's right. that I think they they don't like like their love. We always talk about craft beer having, you know, part of it is having a heart in what you're doing. Like Big Beer's heart is in their staple beers, and they don't know how mm. to transfer that to something that's not their beer. They're like, okay, we own this now. What do we do with it? I don't know. Maybe <laughs> they they don't they don't want to give up their their beer. They don't want to, you know, they're like. Well, we got the support. We got this tap in this restaurant that's Sapporo tap. Maybe we should make it an Acre Steam tap. And they're like, I don't know. The Sapporo. Yeah, it sounds we've weird. We've had that Sapporo tap. We've had that 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 handle's been a Sapporo handle for twenty years. I don't think we could start putting an Anchor Steam in there. And I think that's just what happens. Like that's some of it. Like, ah. so the secret is, you buy out a craft brewery. And you figure out how popular they are versus how many years have to go by before people forget that they were bought out. <laughs> yeah. And then you like, can close oh. them down and blame the public for not like, buying Oh, them. yeah. That seems what happens. Like, oh, you guys, you uh, stupid beer geeks wouldn't buy the beer anymore. And we're like, well, I forgot you guys existed because I don't see you anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> right. So Anchor probably, apparently took seven years to yep. kibosh. So uh, everyone, I if I'm at Stone right now, I'm looking somewhere else because that just seems like it's the next one to fall. I, I I wonder when New Belgium, I wonder how they're doing, how New Belgium's doing. Yeah, I, their fate has begun for sure. I did notice Fat Tire six pack on the shelf looking when I was looking for the anchor, mm-hmm. um, which is still in bottles, oddly enough. Nice. Yeah, but it's like, well, okay, you know, <laughs> this it shouldn't just, be this hard to find anchor. <laughs> I'm just always flabbergasted, but like. <laughs> Cause like if if I'm ignore like I'm in the grocery store all the freaking time, and I don't see anybody yeah. messing with the, any of that stuff, I'm just like if I'm not messing with it, I'm not seeing anybody. Like, is anybody buying beer? <laughs> I'm just like, hey, am <laughs> I the likes only, beer anymore. Am I the only one that likes beer? 
But no, like if you're in the market though, the only action is over in the craft beer. The those two ends. Mm. They, yeah, the supermarket is condensed. You know, there's down. So now it's like there's two doors of craft and two doors of macro, and then you got the tall boys. No bombers anymore. No bombers unless you go to Sprouts. No, no, no bombers. No bummer. I asked for a bummer. Um, nobody did a bummer. Mix packs still everywhere. Yeah. Oh, man. Um, I am just all, finishing all this triple dates. IPA from <laughs> Adventurous <laughs> Brewing. You can do it. I, I believe in you, Nick. Rolling Sevens. This is a BA Cyclone beer. Dry hopped every day for seven days straight. Every day. Air day. Seven days straight of dry hopping, huh? Yes. That doesn't say if they change the hops every day. It just says <laughs> every day dry hopped. Maybe they add one hop. Yeah. <laughs> they just keep using the same one they did on day one. And I always keep dipping it in there. <laughs> Dip. Dry hop. Yep. That's Dip. dry hopped. Dry hop. Didn't say, didn't say well, how long we dry hopped it. It got wet when it. I put it in. It's like I get a new one. Yeah. We let we dip it in, let it dry out, dip it in again the next day. <laughs> we let it dry out, then we re dip it. More dipping. But they have clothes lines of hops that yeah. are drying the dip in the beer. They just put some hops on a fishing at the end of a fishing hook and, and like zzz, and they plop zzz. it in there. Zzz. You almost had it. Oh, you gotta be quicker than that. Could be quicker than that. All right, well, I think we covered the anchor thing. Yeah, sure we Rad, beat it Rad Stacey It's not it. our fault. Not our fault. Stupid Sapporo, man. Doesn't know how You're to do it. it from us, Sapporo. Doesn't know how to do things. And how how about this? No more, like, I'm not saying, you know, obviously it's not like a thing happening anymore for the most part. But nobody, mm-hmm. nobody, no big beer buying out craft beer anymore. Let's just. Let's let's just accept that's just not a thing to do. Just don't do it. Yeah. Have you learned your lesson yet? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just it's not gonna work out. Please please name me a a time where it worked out for the big beer to make more oh, now we're making more money because we bought uh <laughs> this brewery. Oh man. Yeah, so it has one craft brewery been lifted up. To big beer status, no, no. post buyout. Yeah. Like, has it, who's gotten more shelf space? Like you're saying, who's gotten more shelf space because of being bought out? Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I don't know what that brewery is. Maybe Elysian. Oh, ooh, that's a good one. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, because I do did see. Uh, where was it? ABM Bev that bought Elysian? They that that one they did that one they. That's a good one. I think there there's more. What was Elysian's? Um, yeah, it is ABM Bev. Okay, um, what was their geeky their best like number one sought after beer Elysian had? The Space was, Dust. Yeah, Space Dust. Like I did see space dust more after that, and then I saw a lesion more after it. That is definitely one where all of a sudden you you saw more a lesion beer than you used to see. So that's the but model. Yeah, I, I can't <laughs> think of anybody that's been bought out and rocketed into superstardom. Yeah, they they tried with Ballast Point, but it. Obviously mm. didn't work. No. Uh, Lagunitas has all but disappeared. Yeah. Yeah, Lagunitas. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, even Lagunitas is not, it's still around. I I wouldn't, mm-hmm. I don't think it's going to happen like Anchor happened, but. Yeah, it didn't get better. It didn't get more. There's not more. Lagunitas. <laughs> didn't get more. Didn't get more. That's just English. 
I'm public schooled English major. Mm-hmm. You're welcome. Uh, was there any other culture items you wanted to share? Nick? Uh, yeah, just a couple really quick. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> looking out for. Wow. Uh, I don't know how widely this is distributed. It is in cans. Um, if you are a Volkswagen enthusiast and or a uh, Ford Cobra enthusiast, um, there is a carburetor called a 48 IDA, uh, D as in dog, very popular with Volkswagens. Mm -hmm. And so uh, VW Trends contracted with Chapman Brewing in Orange. Ah. Orange is also a very popular spot for Volkswagening. <clears throat> a lot of history down there. Uh, the city of Orange, not just Orange County in California. <laughs> All right. Uh, city of Orange in particular. So Chapman Brewing's in Old Town Orange near the uh, the roundabout, if you're familiar with that area. Uh, they've made a 48 IPA ah. instead of IDA. So it's it's paying homage to the carburetor that loves to be run on race cars. Uh, it has a bus on the label, and they had an event called the uh, Chapman Brewing. Where's my Where is my flyer? Hot Dubs and Cold Subs Car Show last weekend on June 10th. I missed it, but these cans are floating about, so I'm looking out for one. Uh, I'm sure it's just a basic IPA. I think Untapped said it was Citra. Let's see. Citra, Eldorado, Amarillo, and Mateca hops. Okay. So, probably okay. Not expecting great things. I just want the label. Yeah. Label by. Label by. Uh, so there's that, and um, if I win the lottery oh. tonight, um, oh, yeah, I'm opening one of these immediately. Oh, this is uh, in in Florida, Florida. Oh, Florida. They have a place called Mutts and Martinis. It's a upscale sports bar with a doggy daycare slash swimming pool. <laughs> wow. Oh, well, you dump your dump your dog off at the swimming pool. Say, all right, Daddy's yeah, gonna go, go drink. drinking. No, you drink there. You you get to drink martinis while your dog like, wears himself out yeah, or herself. Gets, gets in a fight, and then you then gets in a, a fight. And that's what happened to me. And then Louis, we get in some fight, and then like the uh -huh. pe the people, I'm like having a then good time, banned. starting to relax. I'm like, ah, oh. and those people text me like, oh, your dog's fighting you need to come get your dog I'm like oh god damn louie <laughs> damn it louie yeah and then you're drunk so you can't take him home yeah and i'm like what am i supposed to now. do I'm like well what was your plan before when you were gonna pick him up <laughs> i don't know <laughs> i was gonna so i was gonna stay here for six hours and sober up that's right so it's twenty five dollars an hour for your dog. Not too bad. I'm sure cocktails are more than that, so not to worry. <laughs> um, it's in it is in Saint Petersburg, which I think we have some perfect poor Saint listeners in that Peter. area. But yes, I would do a a craft beer version of this mutts and uh, mutts uh, and brews. I don't know. There's a. Uh... A place in the Santa Cruz area. It's not Santa Cruz proper. It's uh, uh, kind of that same town that uh, Watsonville. Was, no, not Watsonville. North. <laughs> north. <laughs> no. 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 Um, not Aptos, but um, what's that? What's Carlsbad? Carlsbad? Is Carlsbad sound right? I don't know. Beer thirty. Capitola. It's Capitola. Thank you. Capitola as well. Search for. Uh, it's a place called Beer Thirty, and they have a dog pen area where you like you 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 know put your dog in there and let it let it mix with the other dogs. 
and then you can go drink. Yeah, good tip. But there's always you know? there's always some sort of fight or some sort of thing happening. Yeah. My dog's a jerk too. She wouldn't last long. <laughs> the, yeah. Louis's like, whoa, you another dog? Go fuck yourself, <laughs> other dog. <laughs> right? What the hell? I'm the only dog around here. Get the hell out of here. Get the hell out of here. Park, park, park. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That's that's my Louie impersonation. Thank you. Ray. That's a good one. I've heard Louie, and that's accurate. Yep. Thanks. <laughs> I'm going to get another beer. All right. We encourage you to be on the show, the listeners of the Perfect Poor, the community that is the Perfect Poor community. We've been doing this a lot of years, and really, uh, I always think I can do a lot better, but so we really try to um, promote to our listeners or just be, we're, we're all one big family. And uh, it's our favorite thing for this show. And one of those ways is to have the voicemails, the people that call us. You can do that yourself. You can call 559-492-0542. Or you can email us, perfectportpodcast at gmail.com. And you can... Uh, you can send an audio file to that email, or you can just email us and we'll read it on the show. Let's start with traditional voicemails. And the first one is... Uh-oh, shit. Everyone, hold <laughs> that, on. That's an unfortunate name. <laughs> Why is that not working? This is a new. I got new cables for this situation that's happening right now. And of course we did. Oh, fuck. It's too hot. It was and working. Of different beer. There you go. The people yeah, brought man. in. Come on. Come on, Mike. Perfect pour. This is Pittsburgh Tom. Just calling in P to give P a little P bit of the stats from Radar Palooza 3. Uh, first, I want to thank everybody that made it out here. It was, that it was a great time. It was insane. Thanks to everybody that sent beer and brought beer. Super cool. We shared 78 bottles or cans oh, of Woo! different beers that people brought in or brought to Radar Palooza. So um, I think somewhere online you can see the kill shot of the 78 cans and bottles. We visited 31 breweries in Pittsburgh. <laughs> oh. I also took Scotty and Martina to one a brewery in Ohio and one in West Virginia. Um, so, yeah, 31 breweries hit, and there was still, like, a ton that we missed out on, but... It was, it was definitely a good run we had. Uh, we went to Heinz Field, now called Hackershire Stadium. Yeah. We did a tour there. The Steelers we went to see a Pirates play. game where the Pirates oh. won Whoa. with a walk-off home run in Day the night. And drama. Went to a Riverhound soccer game. They're not yeah. MLS, but they're uh, USL, I believe, like a league below the MLS. So it was a good time. I want to send a shout-out to Mark Radar. In jazz, uh, for um, all the help they gave me planning out Radar Palooza 3 in Pittsburgh. Uh, they had the experience from the prior Radar Palooza, so that was a huge help. And as you guys heard on the prior voicemails last week, Scotty hit 10,000 check-ins and Radar hit 5,000 check-ins, both during what? Radar Palooza 3. Super cool stuff. So that's about it. I think I am finally fully recovered after that um, week. It was actually eight days. Radar Palooza started on Saturday the 24th. <laughs> Scotty Martina Breaking came in. Breaking all the Radar Palooza and, uh, records. Jasmine Blossom came in, and it ended on Sunday, eight days later, July 2nd. Um, 
when the rest of the crew all headed out. I think the last ones to leave were Kent and Lori heading out to Seattle, and we actually stuck in a couple breweries on their way out. <laughs> so, all right, I just wanted to uh, check in and give you some of the stats. Oh, and uh, Radar checked in 117 beers Holy at Radar Blues. Moly. I think that was the highest count. 117. That's the record, folks. Beers. So, congrats, Radar. That's Radar Blues right, of peace record. Peace out, everyone. Keep up the great work. Bye. Bye. Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. <laughs> I like the stat. Like, can somebody is somebody going to be the radar his, radar palooza historian and keep all the <laughs> radar palooza stats together and keep that organized? Because it sounds like uh, radar palooza three owns a lot of the records now. Damn it! Can't be beaten. Like long that has to have been the longest of the radar paloozas. Officially, eight days of radar paloozing. Uh, yeah, you know, you have radar checking in 117 uniques during the festival. All the brewery visits, wow. the kill, the, all the bottles that were killed. Like, I feel like this just keeps ramping up. Like, I don't know how you're going to beat Radar Palooza 3, but I'm sure, I'm sure it'll be a tribe. When, which you know will bring us to like what do we uh when do we start talking about Radar Palooza four? Yeah, what's the location? Yeah, I don't know. Hey, sorry, Paul here got uh, cut off there. Yeah. Um, I just got up this morning, had my coffee, looked at my Google News feed, and see this article that says. Anchor Brewing to cease operations. Uh, I'm sure that will be Uh-oh. probably at the top of your culture. I don't believe uh, it. List this week, but not that I'm drinking a lot of Anchor these days or anything. But that's heartbreaking. I mean, literally, if Fritz Maytag, who rescued Anchor Brewing from the axe back in the late '60s, I don't. Is he even still alive? I don't know. Uh, I mean, when you sell when you sell your business to a large corporation, i.e., Sapporo, um, that's the risk. I mean, will Heineken do that to Lagunitas? Will Sapporo do that to Stone? No. I mean, what's next? Uh, because it, it's it comes to the bottom line. For the big the big wigs, they don't care about the iconic brand and the history and everything. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's just it's just kind of heartbreaking and sad. Um, you can always see the writing on the wall, but like uh, what gets left behind? And there's nobody, there's no Fritz Maytag now that's going to come swoop in and save Anchor at this point. Yeah. And I know that palettes have changed and times have changed with beer and everything else, but it is just sad. Um, so yeah, I'm just mourning, mourning the loss, I guess, um, for whatever it's worth and feeling a little sad. All right. Keep Mm -hmm. up the good work on this gloomy, sad day. (laughs) (laughs) All right, guys. Cheers. Sad too. Bye. Bye. So Mikey, if they do close it down. And someone reopens it, say in a year, mm-hmm. somehow gets the rights to the name. Is it still the same brewery to you, or has the legacy been broken? Whoa. Um, yeah, it would need to be. Uh, I guess it would need to be somebody there that's an anchor person, you know. Mm-hmm. Like if it's just like all different people. But they are using the anchor name and the anchor recipes. Yeah. And even maybe even the anchor original place. But it's there's just no anchor people there. Then that would be kind of weird. So if only the bass player is left. <laughs> if only the keyboardist is the only original member <laughs> yeah. of the band. Only original member. <laughs> like that Doesn't beach show. whatever, like the beach the Mike Love Beach Boys. Right. Nah, I'm like, ah, I don't know, man. Featuring John Stamos. <laughs> yeah. The John Stamos Beach Boys. I'm like, ah, I don't know, bro. If you don't have Brian Wilson, then I don't think I'm going to. 
uh, show up. So, yeah, you need to have somebody, somebody there at Anchor still. Because uh, yeah, that is plug. like, I wonder what, like, if they're going to say, all right, we're <clears throat> bankrupt, this is bankrupt, and then I, I'm i assuming in bankruptcy you just lose everything. Can somebody pick up that name? Can somebody take mm. the Anchor name and, like, the Anchor recipes? Like, what happens to the recipes? Like, I, is Sapporo still yeah. owns them even after bankruptcy? Right. How many breweries have been around for 125 years to know? Yeah. <laughs> when does the copyright run out on a recipe? But I mean, everybody knows the recipe, so it's not like it's secret, but I don't know. It does seem like it does seem like you can somebody can grab that anchor some iconic anchor things and make something out of that. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Can you hear me? I Duh. was driving, but I was listening to the latest show. Okay. And I pulled over right when I heard I gotta Mikey say pull over. Nobody's asked me to tap their firkin. Yeah. So there you go, Mikey. <laughs> Nobody's you can asked tap me. My firkin anytime. Sounds buddy. good. Oh, Scotty. Just make sure you oh, there leave it is. Bunghole, too. Oh my god. Okay? That's all. Like I, I just barely the show's only like, I don't know, fifteen minutes in or so, and I heard that. And I'm like, eh, I better pull over or I'll forget it. I'll forget it. Mm-hmm. So I actually pulled over at the 180 market. It's on the corner of McCall and the 180. And I was going to grab wow. some beer because I'm, I'm kind of running low on beer. Let's see what they got. And that's about that's about all I really have for this voicemail. But, yeah, you can tap my furkin any time, Mikey. Okay. Keep up the great look. Hey. Scotty B. That's so what sweet. That's so nice, of Scotty B. Thanks, Chief. I love gold. I uh, just opened a new beer. I I think I should have waited on this, but I I guess I couldn't wait anymore because I think we all all three of us have the same beer, but it's oh. a West Coast Lustra, uh, beer donated by Pittsburgh Tom. Of Radar Palooza 3 fame. And it's a uh, IPA. This is from Dancing Gnome. Nice. It's got a gold label. I opened uh, Here Comes Trouble from Claim Steak Brewing. Oh. This is a wazoo beer. <clears throat> Can you hear me? Is this the same I was driving, but I was listening to the latest. Yeah, sorry. Oh I yeah. Tried to play Been that there. Scotty B voice bell get. Oh my god. Yo, what's up, Perfect Portrait? You be here? What's up, you? guys? I did be here about you. Uh, yeah. I just was busy. Where you went been, on vacation, dude? Did nothing. I was on vacation for not even call July. us. Uh, just relax. Isn't slept it a in, vacation stayed up late, calls? watched TV. Really didn't do anything around the house. Wifey left me alone. No daddy do list. Nothing, homie. That's so I, a I great staycation. Relaxed. I needed it. Uh, I really don't get the opportunity to sleep in. Sleeping in for me on the weekends at six a.m., homie. So I got to sleep Damn. in until at least nine a.m. Yeah. Um, other than that, you know, I apologize for not sending in my voicemails, like I said. Uh, also, my interview out there with the, the Tap Room podcast. Mikey, I know you don't like it when I bring up other podcasts, but hey, <laughs> you are still you? my favorite. You are my number uno, homie. Okay. You're my number one, two, and three, big okay. dog. So, I guess perfect I will always live in my heart. Um, but they interviewed me. 
Uh, the the interview went well, but that it, for some reason it, it couldn't he couldn't pull up the file. So we did a second one, a shorter oh, one, just a quick. I've never screwed up a podcast. So That's that weird. <laughs> Not once. Nope. My uh, OG to your beer underscore link on Instagram. There's a link there for you to hear that. Just talked about beer and just uh, how I um, collaborate with breweries and shit like that. Uh, also. Um, Nick, you brought up Villains Brewery in Anaheim. Uh, I, I, it was funny that I heard this, but you didn't really bring it up. Uh, Villains is located where the Anaheim Modern Times was located, the one that had the swimming pool. Oh. So they took over that oh, location that. and they opened Villains. I'll be out there this Saturday. Uh, I think I'll be there like at noon. I'm leaving my house at 11, so it's about an hour to drive. So I'll be out there uh, getting a tour of the facility. Been talking back and forth with, I don't I don't know if it's the marketing department or who on Instagram. Uh, they started following me, and we just chopped it up. And I told them I was going to come visit them. And they said, hey, let chop us know when up. you get here, and New we'll give you a little tour of, the, of our up. area. So getting a, a brewery tour, so the wife is happy about that. Um, and then from there, we'll probably head over to Monkish and Unsung oh. and then go eat over at the uh, Anaheim Packing House, man. The pa- I don't know if you've ever been there, homie. Uh, the Nick Anaheim Packing I've been there. House is just like a little mall with just restaurants, but like good fucking restaurants. And they even have like a good tap list in, in the area. So, and that's actually in the center. And you have Unsung on one side, then you have... Uh, uh, Villains is on the opposite side, and then Monkish is like located to the same property as the Anaheim uh, food, packing district or meat district or something like that. Um, so you, mm-hmm. you park and you just walk to all, all these four locations. So that's pretty cool. Um, so I'll be doing that this Saturday, get away from the, the San Fernando Valley because it's supposed to hit 105, 108. And I figure I'll just go uh, somewhere. It's only going to be, be 112 so here. There you go. Hi, if yeah. I think of anything or I remember anything, um, I, I'll give you a call back. Oh, t- tickets are going for sale for uh, GABF. Who's going? Woo! I know I'm not, but maybe next year. Uh, GABF, man. Get them tickets. Get it. Use uh, promo code CHEW on this <laughs> and you'll get 0% off yeah. your ticket. <laughs> CHEW on this. All right, this is Chew Your Beer. He ate the watcho. Peace out, eh? Oh, hey, hey Colin and Janine, got to get ready. JBF. That's right. There was one year called the Janine Mills. Prepare the Jacuz. Yeah, prepare the Jacuz. There was one year, I think they weren't there. Like, like no, wow. no, GABF, we left. Like, we don't want to <laughs> be in this shit. We don't want to be in town when all the beer geeks are here in the same town. Fuck that. We got the hell out of here. But yeah, GABF. Planning, planning has begun. And go see Chew around the Anaheim area this Saturday. As he tours breweries and facilities, chew your beer. Yeah, packing houses for real. They got good food there. Good beer choices, too, but oh. mostly food. And valet parking. They will Whoa. park your car for you. They will park it real good. How much do you tip a valet? I don't know. Uh, five bucks. I don't know. All right. Yeah, that sounds, sounds good. Give them five. Uh, so here we you only go. have one valet no spot in Fresno. <laughs> So we're not real <laughs> versed in the, in front of the mall. Yeah, in front of Fashion Fair Mall. I think maybe like three people use it. Yeah. When you circled three times and you give up. Yeah. Fine. Mm-hmm. Fuck my car. They they got like they have like a hundred stalls and there's like three cars in their stall. <laughs> Reserve for Valley. All right, that's uh, so good on that. She called me up and left me a voicemail, but she didn't leave a name. She Thanks, everyone, for calling. You can call into the show. You've never called in. You've never uh, written us. you never sent a voicemail. We're, we're here for you. 559-492-0542 or perfectportpodcast at gmail. That. Yeah.
We like all voicemails. You don't have to make us laugh, but we do <laughs> appreciate it. Nah. Yeah, whatever you got. We'll deal with it. Probably talk over it. But we'll mm-hmm. deal with it. What did you drink this week? Oh, crap. Maybe I checked them in. Uh-oh. Untap's the new I Twitter, man. You got to use your untap. You got to use it? Yeah. Since nobody uses it. Do you lose I, it if you don't that's use it? Th- I think t- uh, untap needs to... Uh, needs to let us be able to do, like, uh, memes and and pictures in the comment section. Because I, I said <laughs> that, that would, it's... That would encourage yeah, you to use it more? Yeah. I said it's good that I can't DM anyone pictures on untap. Right. That's fine. I, I think they should hold to that. But No let, Snapchat fiasco. Yeah. But let, let me uh, post uh, GIFs and whatnots yeah. in the comment section. I think you untap need to needs to open that up. Cause I yeah uh, I like to re- I really like to respond with gifts I don't like to actually write things. <laughs> uh, damn it! I I know where the cans I drink are at, and I can go to the <laughs> garbage and get them. Where the, where, um, I where? I did have a Super Bloom from Bottle Logic. That was an IPA. Oh, okay. That was pretty nice. I gave it four and a half, so oh, must have been good. Um, West. Uh, what's the uh, Pure West from Pure Project? That was another one. Oh, yep. Had it. Uh, I think another Pure Project I had was, is it, was it West Coast United? Um, yes. I don't know if you noticed the label of that beer, Mikey. Um, not only was it cool looking, it had like this red, white, and blue motif that looked like it was painted on old wood. Yeah. But the label actually had texture to it. Yeah, yeah, Which I've never seen before. Like, you could feel the wood grain Mm -hmm. in the label. Yeah, you're right. What's up with that? That was unique to me. I liked it. It had a tactile and a visual. And the beer was good. I did not check that in. Oh, yes, I did. Uh, four caps. I gave it four. Oh. West Coast yeah, United. Standard, um, standard rating. Standard rating. Oh, what else? I'm trying to think of the... Maybe it was a new glory beer I had. It's in the trash can right now. I threw it away earlier. Um, hmm. This weekend was busy. I did have four beers Saturday night, and I can't remember the fourth one. Thank God. I always mix in a Dust Bowl Therapist when I can. Nice. Keeping it triple. It's it's triple. Gotta stay triple. Triple girl summer. Stay <laughs> Tri- triple. Hot boy, triple, triple hot boy summer. Triple Hot Boy Summer. Um, I don't think that's it. I mean, I'm sure there was more, just not coming back to me at the moment. All right. Uh, the Nick 80 on a depth and the rad underscore Stacy with an E. Stacy with an E on a tap. Rad underscore Stacy. Teddy. I am Dorktown on Untap or Mikey Top Four. Get you there, I'm sure. By the way, I still have my uh, group, Perfect Poor Group. You can make groups oh. in un- Untapped of like you want to like only see a specific people in your feed come across. You can make mm-hmm. a group of those. So I have, and you can only go to a hundred. So I have a group of people on untap that i know are listeners of the show 
that I can just um, follow. And I've had to make two groups because they've gone over 100. But Whoa. if you're somebody that listens to the show that follows me on the tap and thinks don't you, you don't ever see me toasting your check-ins, then I might not <clears> have <throat> you in the group properly. So just let me know. Like, let me leave a comment on one of my – either tag me wow. in your check-in and say, hey, Mikey, am I in the, the Perfect Poor group? Or uh, comment on one of my check-ins and say, hey, make sure I'm in the group. Has anybody ever been demoted to group two? <laughs> well, I had to start a group two, and I can't. It's not a demotion, more of just like these are later people. But it is like that mm-hmm. that first 100 group. Those are the uh, OG. That's the OG group. Oh, that's the man. So not that there's anything cut. wrong with the people in the group two, but I do have a group. There's a group one and a group two. I had a Mai Tai. I a PA from Alvarado Street, one of the best uh, IPAs in the business. A new one to me, keeping it real, real as in R E E L, as in fishing reel. Ah, uh, sit from Cellar a Maker. A pun, nice pale ale. A pun. I went to Out of the Barrel on Saturday, and who did I run into? But one Uh-oh. Rad Stacy from the Perfect Four. No Corps. way. Yeah. She was there by herself as well. We were both people there by ourselves. We're like, oh, mm. hi. Oh, you're the other person on that show I'm on. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm on. Um, yeah, you're the other person. <laughs> but we I, sh- I was not there. We had, yeah, you Just weren't there. Wondering. No, but you didn't show up at all. You're like, man, I know where not to go right now. And it's right out of the barrel. Um, I had a while well, I was there. I had a boardwalk dreaming. Red Stacy had something I forget. Boardwalk dreaming was a <laughs> humble C IPA, and then she had to go. She had quote unquote to go. She she stayed uh-uh. for one beer, and she's like, "Oh, I've got business to attend to on Saturday right. afternoon." I'm like, yeah, I know. Saturday afternoon, just big business, business thing that we all got to yeah. go to. She just moved three bar stools over, didn't yeah. she? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I see her in a different section of the bar there. I'm like, hey, <laughs> thought you had business to go to. Oh, oh uh, yeah, that got canceled. Yeah. <laughs> It's at the end, of, other end of the bar business. So I, I sat there alone by myself mm. and had a wingspan. What Literally, else? like you were the only one in the bar <laughs> at all? <laughs> Almost. Uh, Damn. It, it was actually like the deadest I've ever seen it on a Saturday afternoon. Usually it's pretty wow. uh, pumping, but like it was, yeah. it was actually good. At least a d- one dog on the patio. Yeah, it was actually pretty dead. But uh, from Woodhouse Blending and Brewing... Uh, I New England hazy called wingspan, and it was one of those very like white hazy like super super hazy, um you know, uh, almost turning a different color. It's so hazy. Wow. Uh, um, I think I did see that. It was very orange juice like. Yeah. And then before that, earlier in the day, I was at Mad Duck Northwest. And had their Mohazic, which is their hazy. <laughs> and I wonder what that beer is. Dog Days Summer Ale, which is like, I don't know. It's like a bitter kind of, just a light, really light beer. Light bitter mm-hmm. beer kind of. It's not bad. Good for day drinking. And uh, there's still some of that no vacancy from Firestone Walker left at Whole Foods if you want to get on that. But uh, that's about, it's pretty much getting to its uh, its end date. Uh, Super Bloom a Bottle Logic Beer, an IPA. That was, that was a nice beer. Had a good aroma. I'm recommending Super Bloom. And then Cosmic Noon from Cellar Maker Brewing. And that, that's another IPA. And so cool. Okay, I had a four pack, got it at Whole Foods. It was all right. I won't, probably won't need to buy it again, but it's not bad beer. If you see it, 
and it t- meets your budgeting, then it's cool. That's my comprehensive review of it. Cheers, 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 cheers. It's the end of the show. Dick the Dick Katie, would you like to give out any cheers? I'm shocked. Is it me? Uh cheers to our new untapped follower. Oh Clinton H, aka Dusmir. Man, I don't get Dutch enough Mir. new untapped followers. That's bull, man. Yeah, they don't know what they're getting themselves into. <laughs> as in boredom. I follow that guy. I forgot. Like, oh, he the, Nick, he, oh, he's on a beer podcast? Oh, I bet he posts a lot. What? Yeah. A lot. I'll all the him. time. <clears throat> so cheers. Uh, cheers. Cheers and a uh, well wishes to Hoppy Libations. I don't know if you saw her post this week. She had quite the mishap oh, I didn't while see hiking. Uh oh. Um, no Hoppy. Yeah. So hope she gets better soon. Uh, I guess the flight home wasn't all that bad. Or, so, but she she scored some beer while traveling. So well, there is that. That's something. Yeah. Well, I hope Hoppy's okay. Yeah. I think everything is going to be okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's my cheers. All right. Cheers to our, uh, a, I believe, returning. I don't think this is brand new. I think this is a returning mm-hmm. golden god, the Fontana Jim, as wow. uh, is now a golden god once again. So big cheers to the Fontana Jim. He's now uh, Hell yeah. back in the golden god circuit. And uh, we we encourage that. You're like, hey, I can't afford this right now anymore and drop out. And then one day you're like, all right, I can come back again. So Mm -hmm. cheers to the Fontana Gym. If you would like to be a Golden God, those are our patrons. We have a Patreon, patreon.com slash perfect poor. And it's just a way that you can give thanks to the show. And we really appreciate it. And you do get to hear the full show. Golden God's here from the moment we start recording until we stop recording. And that's the tailgate, basically, the, what we're doing before the show. So you get that. If, if <laughs> All the secrets. Yeah, all the secrets. Like, yeah, for instance, oh, man, this, this tailgate was electric. We talked about old, uh-huh. uh, old uh, grocery stores in the, our neighborhood that are no longer uh-huh. exist, and a Starbucks that's taking over our local burger joint. That we talked about that. Yeah. So yeah, you missed out. You you and if, when you become Man, a you golden god, know. you can go through all the back catalog of uh, tailgates. Just as a FYI, if you want, you know, go on our Patreon feed and and look and. Listen to any of the old old stuff if you want. So that's that's another thing. So check it out yeah. if you like it. We appreciate it, and thanks to all the golden gods uh, that give us the money so we can pay our bills. It's it's awesome, and thank you. And uh, cheers to Harrison Ford. His birthday was yesterday, Thursday. Wow! Because it's Friday morning right now. So cheers, to Harrison Ford. Another birthday. I have another podcast, believe it or not, called What? Get Off My Podcast. That uh, we have a review of the um, 
uh, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Uh, we, if you've seen the sh- seen the movie, then go listen to that episode, and we give Trent, Trent and I give our a uh, immediate review of that. So cheers to Harrison Ford, and kick still kicking ass, acting his ass off. Got two nominations yeah. for uh, Emmys, I believe, or just some sort of acting nominations for. Um, 1923 and for shrinking. So, and just cheers to everyone that listens to the show and shares the, sh- especially those that share the show and talk about the show. Word of mouth is a big deal and appreciate it. And if you can maybe even go on your Apple podcast thing and give us a review, that always keeps, uh, keeps the energy going. And yeah. uh, we are, yeah, we have an ad. There's an in the in the show notes. There's an address you can send us pretty much anything, like samples of certain samples, certain bottled samples or <laughs> canned samples of things. Only ale yeast samples. Yeah. no lager yeast samples. No, no lager yeast. But uh, you can also send us a postcard. I I like to get postcards. Oh man, I like postcards. So if you've got uh, any postcards around your town, you want to send us one. Yeah. We like those too. All right. I'm sure Red Stacy will be back next week. Unless unless she's just done with us, then, you know. We'll be You're right. welcome. It's <laughs> us. <laughs> You're like, you uh, us. The, the Nick and Mike are just like, uh, they're just like Sapporo. They just kill everything. Like someone could buy us out, and we'll slowly go away. <laughs> yeah, some like uh, uh, some huge podcast like Mark Marin, uh, yeah. <laughs> WTF buys us out or something. They're like, oh wow, WTF we're gonna start Holdings company. Yeah, we're gonna hear more perfect poor, I guess. And then you just, but before you know it, you just completely forget about the show. Pod fade, as they say. Yeah. So yeah, if 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 Mark Mayer wants to buy us out, I guess I guess we'll do it. Yeah, if it's the right, it's fine right kind of money. <laughs> Anything over a hundred dollars, Mark. <laughs> We're like, wow, a hundred dollars. This yeah. idiot. idiot. It's all yours. All right, thanks for listening to the Perfect Poor. Uh, have a great oh, week. Yeah. But a cool week. Yeah, keep it cool. Stay in the AC. If you got business to do, do it in the morning. And then right. then go back inside the rest of the day. Yeah. Blackout curtains on all the windows. Find a friend with the pool. <laughs> hey, I got one of those. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, <laughs> unfriend. I unfriend you. I unfriend you. <laughs> You're like, hey, bro, I'm here work. for the pool. You're, I got your floaties and everything. I'm here for the pool. I'm not like, I unfriend you. I, <laughs> that's not how this works. That's not how any of this works. Hey, right, if you got, if you bring good beer, you can come use my pool any, any time. <laughs> hey, Mikey, I got a lesion. <laughs> oh, a lesion. <laughs> That's the one. That that's the one gym. buyout beer that did it right. Yeah, I found some anchor. You want some anchor? Oh, well, yeah. What what your anchor is it? <laughs> oh, I'm going to. I'll bet. I'll bet I can find some old anchor, that original mm. label anchor somewhere. Nice. I'll bet there's some place in Fresno that has original label anchor, not bright yellow. <laughs> label anchor but yeah. like <laughs> soda pop anchor yeah uh, yeah I'm gonna go I'm gonna go buy some anchor beer here for the first time in a long time right. uh, it's going I'll see you at Strummers too then I'll see you at Strummers bye bye have a great week bye. be safe uh-huh. have fun of course but first you gotta check your dates Oh,